Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. military forces stand out as one of the most powerful and numerous worldwide. Their investment in developing new military technologies has allowed them to create unique weapons that give them an advantage over other forces. Such development has resulted in the appearance of tools such as air defense systems responsible for neutralizing any threat that enters its airspace. These devices include different technologies, from tactical missiles to advanced radar systems. As part of this list of systems is CRAM, abbreviated from Counter Rocket Artillery and Mortar, which is actually a set of systems that together are responsible for detecting and destroying different threats, such as artillery and rockets, hence its name. Due to its characteristic of being a system of systems, or SOS, its implementation is carried out with initial preparation of the individual components to be later integrated and form the complete set. For example, one of the most important features is its land-based phalanx weapon system responsible for intercepting targets, which is individually assembled by members of the manufacturing company, such as Raytheon, to eventually connect with devices such as the command and control system and communication components. Because this system must be implemented strategically, in some cases with difficult access or far from large infrastructure. Its installation requires a detailed preparation process. When planning, the military must consider the weather conditions and terrain and determine the type of threats nearby and the direction of the most common attacks. For example, installation in places such as forward operating bases in Iraq or Afghanistan requires the formation of protective walls that defend workers while they prepare the ground and assemble the components. These previous steps may change depending on the diplomatic situation in the region. On the other hand, Due to the advanced electronics of the entire set, an electrical infrastructure must be installed, including connections to the nearest electrical grid or emergency generators. Additionally, the workers must install data connection systems, either fiber optics or wireless adapters, for the sensor and communication set. Once the systems have been assembled, the calibration tasks of the components are carried out, especially the CRAM firing system. During this operation, the engineers and system operators verify your Vulcan cannon has no problems when firing the 20 millimeter ammunition, which also includes that it fires at its indicated rate of 75 rounds per second. In addition, the entire detection, warning, and response process is calibrated by monitoring the response times of the sensors and control equipment. These complex operations must be carried out at any time due to how unpredictable an enemy attack can be, so military forces must ensure their proper functioning through routine maintenance sessions.
Here, technicians follow a structured guide to check each component and identify possible problems, as well as repair or replace parts if necessary. This is done relatively quickly, thanks to various training sessions that these technicians endure to achieve efficient results. The modular feature of this system not only facilitates the maintenance processes, but is ideal during the transportation of the CRAM between different bases and defense posts. This allows the sections to be individually packaged and assembled on different means of transport, initially with trucks unloading the boxes into aircraft, such as the C-17 Globemasters. This ease is repeated with the process of unloading and arriving at its destination, where technicians and soldiers can quickly unpack the boxes to begin their installation at the base of operations. Characteristics offered by CRAM can be observed in other systems with similar architectures, but used for different environments. This is the case of the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, which works as a defense against different threats with the CRAM. Only in this case is the CIWS used on naval ships. This system, typically painted naval gray to match the vessel's exterior, can be located either aft or stern, or in both locations if the ship is very extensive. This weapon uses the inputs given by multiple sensors that detect the targets to start shooting its 20 millimeter ammunition, which is more than enough to neutralize most attacks. Even with the power of the CIWS, it is not the only tool used by naval ships during attacks to act as both defensive and offensive systems. Some boats have capabilities, such as missile systems, capable of responding to different threats. These differ according to the type of platform they use to be launched. Some of these cases include surface-to-air missiles, such as the RIM-116, used to attack aircraft, surface-to-surface -surface missiles used to attack other vessels and targets on land, and defense systems against ballistic missiles. In the event that the threats are submarines or even other vessels, there are more offensive options to counter these objectives. Here, the iconic torpedoes come into play, which can be launched underwater and destroy threats in this location. Like most weapons, torpedoes have come in different varieties and evolutions since their introduction more than a century ago. Currently, advances in electronics, propulsion systems, and materials engineering have allowed torpedoes to have guidance technologies such as sonars, electric motors, and pump jets to reach speeds of up to 50 knots or advanced explosives designed to inflict maximum damage. This weapons development has led naval forces to experiment with less conventional technologies to improve their offensive capabilities further. The investment that has been given to directed energy weapons has allowed the emergence of offensive laser systems with promising characteristics. An example of this is the prototype known as XN-1, 
LAWS, installed on the USS Ponce amphibious transport dock to destroy targets or disable sensors on enemy systems. Although it did not result in its final production, it opened the way for new developments that have greater viability for serial production. Observing the advantages these laser systems can offer, the military forces have conducted multiple tests to verify the effectiveness of this technology in various conditions. In the case of the Air Force, the use of a high-energy laser occurred with the modification of a Boeing 747 called YAL-1. This aircraft had a one megawatt chemical oxygen iodine laser mounted inside, along with the rotating turret in its nose, which could direct and focus the beam. Tests carried out between 2007 and 2010 destroyed two test missiles. However, Due to a lack of funds, the project was canceled, but it was not before the functionality of this technology was verified. Even with the dedication to the study of new prototypes for the Air Force, there was a greater focus on improving existing systems to achieve greater aircraft effectiveness. For example, bombers over the years have undergone numerous modifications such as the installation of better components in their bomb bays, which have gone from simple hatches that release explosives to include rotation systems to change between types of ammunition and an internal suspension system that keeps the ammunition safe from the vibrations of powerful aircraft, such as the B-52. Additionally, Internal bays have been implemented in stealth aircraft for their missiles in order to improve aerodynamics and improve the stealth capacity of these aircraft. In attack aircraft such as fighter jets, their development has led them to have a wide range of weapons at their disposal. Many of these include missiles for various targets, such as other enemy aircraft using radar or infrared guidance, as well as ground attack missiles, which feature precision guidance such as GPS. On the other hand, they can have explosives such as joint direct attack munitions, which are ideal for tactical attacks. In the case of close combat, most of these aircraft have machine guns or other internal cannons. Other aircraft, such as UAVs, take advantage of their flight autonomy, also serving as tools for tactical operations. Cases like the MQ-9 carry ammunition such as AGM Hellfire missiles, which are used to attack armored vehicles and bunkers. Additionally, new technologies and pump systems are implemented in this type of aircraft. This happens with the implementation of laser-guided bombs, such as the GBU-38 system, which belongs to the JDAM Ammunition Group. This, together with the operational endurance of these autonomous aircraft, makes them ideal for carrying out these operations, reducing the direct risk to military personnel. The overall impact of the GB-38 is just more versatility uh, and more options for the commanders and the, uh, and the air crews downrange. With these constant advances in offensive and defensive systems in the different branches of the military forces, 
the importance of investment in technology for military strengthening is demonstrated. This not only involves evolving existing systems, but also venturing to explore new technologies that could become the future of the U.S. military forces. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.